Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is following Yeshua. Welcome back again to the rock. Hallelujah. What, what, what do you want? What, what do you want? <laughs> uh, so this is uh, another video to go along with the video I did, I believe it was yesterday, on welfare. And while, you know, I like to, again, provide a balance to the things that I talk about. And in this case, uh, I'm going to attempt to bring a balance. Because it is uh, very applicable that we have a, 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 uh, a large amount of wicked women. And the Bible says... Uh, all wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. That's in the Ecclesiasticus. But also we must understand that there are many of wicked men. You know, we have to understand that this road is narrow. So the idea of having us of, of us having a profound amount of righteous people or holy people, which means set apart, is not going to be uh, it's just not going to be. So in that, I you know, with the uh, the whole idea of of the welfare system, there are many women today that get abandoned. Uh, let me not say a many. <laughs> there are some that truly get abandoned by their husbands. You know, the Bible says that a man to provide food clothing and conjugal rights and then when you read in Ecclesiasticus it tells us what food is it says it's food it's water and then it tells us what a covering is it talks about clothing uh, apparel and a roof over their head and then conjugal rights but there are many men that are abandoning that role that requirement that we are as men supposed to do we abandon washing them by the water of the word we abandon nurturing them we abandon cherishing them we abandon loving them so that we can pursue other various things and what i mean by abandoned sisters don't run off of that statement and say you abandoned me because you didn't give me what i want no the bible if he gives you what the bible requires that's set so that does not leave you a loophole to say well i want this and if you don't give me this you're abandoning me nah the most high y'all already defined what the abandonment is not you but there are men that have truly abandoned their wives. And that also perpetuates the, the problem with welfare. Why, why there are so many women that depended on the welfare system now also, I will say. Uh, that that is not a, a, that's a rare case. <laughs> that is truly a rare case. But there are those that are abandoned. And also men, another issue... What, what causes many of our sisters to go to the welfare system is the fact that there are women, there are men that die, husbands that die, and have left nothing for their wives. They've left, you know, that's one of the things I consider, that's one of the reasons why I work so hard, that's one of the reasons why I'm out here, is if something happens to me, brothers, there's something, they don't, they don't have to run off and go find work in the system. That's why I work so hard here. That's why I work so hard doing what I'm doing here. It's that they don't have to go out and find jobs in the system. They don't have to abandon the lifestyle, you know, that they're at home right now. You know, they, they, don't, they don't work in the system. They don't have to leave home all of a sudden, put the children in the system, put the children. They don't have to do all that. They can continue to maintain the homestead. And I have, I have things and, and, and agreements and covenants intact so that if something were to ever happen to me, they're fully taken care of. Fully. That's another thing that we as men forsake. We forsake the obligation to set our house in order. Like when I li li listen to that word, set your house in order, I don't just take it to mean presently while you're alive. I also understand setting my house in order when I'm gone. Is it still not my house? Does it still not represent my name? Is the inheritance still not left to my children? So it is my house. 
and I'm setting in order so that not just when I'm alive, but when I'm gone, they're taken care of. Systems are set up so that they're taken care of. And because we have a lot of men that don't think that far, what happens is we have sisters that are in, you know, apartments or whatever, and something happens to the husband, and immediately the question of how am I going to make it has to come into their head. How am I going to survive? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to pay the mortgage? How do I keep the lights on? How do I keep food on the table? And one of the most prominent ways is a system. Pharaoh, Egypt. Because we have not thought ahead. You know, we think about the current. We think about the now. We think about the current pleasures. Now, we do have plenty of women who, would. it seems like they would rather sacrifice um, their future for a half-decent present. They would sacrifice, literally, their children's future for them to have a, 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 a Gucci and Kabuchi purse or a Prava or a, a, you know, all those expensive, you know, Sanford and Sons purses that, that, that people wear and have, and handbags and all that. They'll sacrifice their future. They'll sacrifice the future of their children for it. Nothing you can do about that. But you can do something with a righteous woman, a woman that understands your vision, that understands the sacrifices that you have had to make. So brothers, consider that. Consider, you know, what life are you currently creating for your family? So that if something were to happen to you, your wife and children don't have to run to the system. They don't have to run back to Egypt. To, to, to be provided for. We, it's a large responsibility being a husband. And you must take it with the utmost uh, care and the utmost um, uh, reverence and fear of what the Most High says. It's not just about landing yourself some more vagina. It's not about, you know, uh, uh, well, while that may be good, I mean, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. But it's not about just that. Y'all heard me right. I said just that. <laughs> because that can be <laughs> an important aspect. Oh, you're full of lust. Listen, the children of Israel didn't become numerous by praying and the wives got pregnant. They were doing the do. So please get over your religious and whatever it is thought processes. Let's, let's keep shit real. Let's keep, let's stay in reality. Most of the people running around today, you know, or a large portion of them, have children outside of wedlock, and then they want to pretend like they don't know what the hell sex is. Stop it. Anyway, so we as men have to have an understanding that uh, we can't perpetuate Egypt taking possession of our possessions, being our wives, our children. We can't... Allow Egypt to take possession of their hearts, their minds. You know, many of us, many men today, keep, you know, their wives and children in the very Egyptian system that they say that they are against. Yet, you know, they talk about how oppressive or how wicked it is, and yet they have their wives and children stuck up in the system. Stuck up in it. You know, what, when that's the case, what, what are your words, or what are your actions really showing her? Are your actions showing her that you are against it? Or are your actions showing her that you are for it? It doesn't do any good to speak against a system that you are so heavily dependent on. That you cleave unto. Man, we have to move with wisdom. Especially in times like now. Especially in times like now. We have to move in absolute wisdom. Given to us by the fear of Yah. Given to us by the keeping of his commandments, the seeking out of his ways, the following the, the old paths. It's all right there. The wisdom is all right there. But we cannot facilitate the returning of many of our sisters into this system at all. Now, granted, again, I understand there's a lot of wicked ass women. I get that. But we can't, 
as men lay a stumbling block for the very few righteous ones, we as men can't lay a stumbling block for them. Because already they are the weaker vessel. And those few, brothers, those few righteous ones are really looking to you. They're really looking to be nurtured. And if you look at the root word, uh, or look at nurture in the Greek, in the Thayer's definition in Ephesians 5, that means bring them up to maturity. Some are really looking to be brought up to maturity. Some don't give a damn. Some think they're mature because they have a child, they got their own apartment paid for by the state, or they got themselves a nice little job, and they think that they've reached it. They, they, uh, they grown. But for those that truly understand, brothers, as few as they may be, if you've got yourself one, it's a large responsibility. It's a large responsibility. Let's not make it so that they return back to Egypt. Let's not make it. Let's live as men a holy and set apart lifestyle. Because we can all day talk about how in, 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 uh, 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 wicked they are. But for some of us, we have some righteous ones. We have some. There are some few righteous sisters out there. So let's not just solely be focused on the wicked ones. Let's also esteem, be there, work hard for, provide for, have a plan just in case something happens for us, for the righteous ones, so that they don't have to return back to Egypt. There's so much that falls on us, men, and we are laying, for those of us that are in this faith right now, we are laying a firm foundation, a firm foundation, and I praise y'all for it. I praise y'all for each one of you righteous brothers who is leading your house aright, who is carrying on, who is coming out of her, taking your family out of this wicked ass system the best that you can to live a quiet and set apart life, grow your food, you know, raise your children, uh, have your children grow. Praise y'all. And this time right now, Clearly, store food. Prepare for what is coming. Let us not abandon our families, brothers. Let's, let, let us not uh, uh, put them in a position to be dependent on Egypt. And those that are dependent on Egypt, brothers, those sisters that are, in, are dependent on Egypt and don't want, and you know, it doesn't matter how many Yahs they have in their name or Israels they have in their name, brothers, I'm telling you this, leave them alone. Leave them alone. They are covered by Egypt. Let's focus on the ones that truly understand the meaning of covering and why it's important for them to be covered by a righteous man, a man that loves the Father. I'm not saying that you men are going to be perfect, but you're going to serve Yah and lead your family aright. Bless y'all. Bless y'all. Bless y'all, brothers. I hope you are having a blessed. Is this second day? Third day? Is it third day? Have a blessed third day. What the world knows is Tuesday. We got a uh, day of atonement coming up. And then we have tabernacles. Hallelujah. Shalom.